I hold in my hands the CISC Gemology Reference, affectionately known around JTV as the SGR. So much more than a guide. This is a preservation of Jerry's life's work and a demonstration of his passion for gems. So naturally, we had to have JTV's expert team of gemologists, executives, and creative minds to help bring Jerry's vision to life. In December of 2012, I remember clearly standing in Jerry's cubicle and Jerry saying to me, Donna, I really want to publish my life work. I've been working on this book to teach customers and teach everybody about jewelry and gemstones. I want to publish it. Unfortunately, or for us, God had other plans for Jerry. He left us with an amazing legacy. And he, he left us with this passion that all of all the people at Jewelry Television have for, for jewelry and gemstones. And he left us with a manuscript. He had spent many, many years prior to me working here um, creating this massive document with probably over a thousand pages of information on gemstones, um, some information on jewelry, a glossary. So really an enormous work. The book would, would have to be really astute academically. It was really gonna have to be high end and he insisted on that. I think that was more important to him than anything, that it was not a fluff book that it didn't treat the subject that he loved so much uh, in a superficial way. So if we had made a single volume from A to Z of a thousand pages, I'm not even sure you could pick it up. Frankly, it would be huge. Um, so the first step in sort of digesting this text and trying to figure out how to present it to a customer was to divide it up. And so the first major milestone in this book production was the development of three volumes. Volumes one, volumes two, and volume three. And I have never been so thrilled in my life because all I could see in front of me was this once in a generation, once in a lifetime opportunity to put something together where I had control of the content. I wasn't gonna inherit all the images. We were gonna shoot to our format. We were gonna get, going to control the quality to the highest standards we could possibly get. And I had a company over here backing me up because they loved this man and they were gonna do it right. There you go. It just doesn't get any better than that at all. I'll never forget, the first book went to press that Monday. And that Tuesday, um, the sweet, sweet man in legal came up to me and said, hey, I found this on my bookshelf moving into my office and I thought that you might wanna have it. And it was totally serendipitous because on the very first page of the manuscript is a handwritten note from Jerry um, that says, here is our beginning entry to dominate the world of gems. The opportunity for us to create a work that was worthy of his belief in teaching people about um, jewelry and gemstones was pretty impressive. And to see this in writing was almost like a smile mm -hmm. from above. It was like, wow, okay, that's affirmation. We, and, and for it to happen when it did. Right. So it was like two days after yeah. mm -hmm. printing. Yep, two days after the first book arrived, the sample copies arrived, this binder came and it was, it was, it was pretty neat. It was, it was pretty neat. Jim Wells uh, was absolutely dedicated to producing the most beautiful pictures that we could for this book. Everybody gets into the gemology business through their eyes. So that's the door, right? So if you're enticing new people to come into this world, the first thing they're gonna do, they're using their eyes to see things, and those things need to be beautiful. My job with him was to show him what it was that we wanted to show. We didn't just need to take a picture of this specimen, we wanted to see the ridges, we wanted to see terminations, we wanted to see etches, we wanted to see how the light uh, looked or how the gemstone looked inside. If you can imagine taking a mineral specimen, which is three-dimensional in nature, it's got small parts that reflect light in different ways. You can't just shoot it and have it look good. You have to, in order to portray that dimension to customers or readers, you really have to focus in on it and layer those images. The way this, the focus stacking works is that it's going to shoot that shallow focus, but it's going to stack all of them up. In essence, the bottom line is you get clarity all the way from the front of the image to the back. We felt like that, that collectors of minerals, number one, which is part of our audience, 
and particularly novices, they want to see it all and they want to see it all clearly. Those are really kind of the color backgrounds and the, and the stacking. That's an example of a couple of areas where we really thought about it. We really sort of voted on it as a team. And that team involved gemologists, art directors, involved photographers, not just me, but the other JTV shooters that were involved. In this particular uh, project, it's a very high-end color piece. And you have to be very, very careful who you partner with because that particular aspect of it is everything to this project. Uh, and it'll be everything to JTV customers. It needs to be a reliable reference. I really wanted to do it in North America if I could, uh, but we ended up at Justin's, which is all in this state of Tennessee. So that means that the author of the book wrote the book in Tennessee. He was a University of Tennessee graduate, and we printed the entire piece in, in Clarksville. Companies like Justin's have an awful lot of software in place and key personnel to control the color uh, reproduction. And that's really important on gemstones and jewelry. It ended up being one of the big decision makers about us uh, coming to this particular location. But what we do here at Justin's is we do color management every single Monday on every single one of our presses to make sure and guarantee that whatever we print matches from press to press to press. The boundary equipment and the finishing equipment is first class, it's state of the art. So everything's um, done here in-house? Everything is done in-house here. So in five years, if uh, JTV orders another round of books, they're gonna look just like these. How proud were you when you saw the very first book roll off the press? I just can't tell you. It was unbelievably exciting. Um, as you may know, I'm also a primary photographer. And so these specimens, uh, I studied this close. We were really involved in that part of the process. Color corrected and did a lot of work in Knoxville. And to watch those same images come off the press here was unbelievably rewarding. We really, really spent a lot of time trying to uh, represent these specimens accurately for JTV customers. Most photographers, they uh, work on projects like that, then they hand off the product. They never get to see the tail-in process. Since I was also the production manager, I had the tremendous opportunity to come over here and actually watch those images roll off. First time in my whole career of 35 years that that's happened. Keep watching for more exclusive behind the scenes looks into the unprecedented Sisk Gemology Reference Book Series.